Hi friends, today is Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. Remember this week we are learning about plants and hopefully you had a great time doing some of the activities on the Google Classroom yesterday. There are some more great um, activities to do today. I'm going to read two books again today. I'm going to read one that's called Carrots Grow Underground. And remember in that surprise garden book we saw that carrots grow underground and so do radishes. It's written by Mari Shu, and it's called Carrots Grow Underground. It is a nonfiction book, and this one has a table of contents. So if I would like to just turn to um, the pages about flowers and seeds, I could just follow along and just go right to page 17. But we're going to read the whole book. Now this first section has a heading that says under the soil. So this whole part is going to be about things under the soil or growing under the soil. Green stems and leaves sprout from the soil. Underground, vegetables grow larger and larger every day. Plant roots grow underground. People eat the roots of some plants. Carrots are one kind of root vegetable. So here's the life cycle of a carrot. Here are the seeds. Then it turns into a seedling. Then the carrots. And then it, the plant flowers. And then that creates more seeds. Now this whole section is going to be about growing. Because that's the heading. Growing. Carrots start as tiny seeds. They're planted in cool weather. In one to three weeks, seedlings slowly grow above the soil. So very tiny seeds. Under the soil, the carrots grow longer and thicker. Deep, loose soil helps carrots grow long and straight. If the ground is too hard, it's not tilled enough, then the carrots won't be able to grow very well and they sometimes grow crooked or they don't grow very much at all. Long stems and lacy leaves grow from the carrot tops. So we eat the root of this vegetable. After two to three months, crunchy vegetables are pulled from the ground. This section is called flowers and seeds. <clears throat> Carrots that stay underground all winter grow flowers and seeds the next year. <clears throat> Later, the tiny carrot seeds become the new carrot plants. Many vegetables grow underground. Many vegetables grow the way carrots do. Radishes, beets, and parsnips are other root vegetables. And here is a close-up. Here are the radishes and the beets. And these are parsnips. They kind of look like carrots except they're white. They have a little bit different taste. Onions and potatoes start their lives in the ground too. Vegetables grown underground give us healthy food to eat. So there are the onions at the top and the potatoes at the bottom. We're going to dig them out of the ground. And this back part tells us some word, the definition of some words, what a root is, seedling, soil, sprout, and stem. All right, so today is um, the 5th of May, and in Spanish, that is called, that we say Cinco de Mayo. And in some parts of the United States and in Mexico, there is a huge celebration today and every year on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, and there are parades and food and music. Um, and it's to celebrate an end of a great battle that happened against the French a long, long time ago. Um, I have a book called Cinco de Mouso, and it's about a little mouse, and he's got some maracas in his hands. The story is written by Judy Cox and illustrated by Jeffrey Ebeler. Cinco de Mouso. So instead of saying Cinco de Mayo, which means May, he's saying the fifth of mouse. On the 5th of May, Mouse woke up and wriggled his whiskers. Spicy smells tickled his nose. Beanie, cheesy, ricey smells. A Mexican fiesta. Fantastico! He likes it. Mouse crawled out of his hidey hole. Where was the fiesta? 
Not in the bathroom where the kids brushed their teeth. Not in the bedroom where mom folded laundry. Not in the kitchen where dad washed dishes. Mouse slipped out the front door and set off to explore. Mouse scampered down alleyways, past sidewalks and streets. He didn't see greedy cats stalk him down the street. Before long, Mouse stopped at the edge of the city park. What sights met his eyes? All around were people eating and singing, dancing, strolling, playing. All around were food and drink. Sombreros, that's the big hats they wear, serapes, and bright paper flowers. Cinco de Mayo! His eyes grew round as he beheld a confetti-covered piñata stuffed with candy and shaped like a burrow, which is another name for a donkey, hanging in a tree above the plaza. Have you ever got to hit a piñata? What came out? Mmm, yum. I must have that for my fiesta, he said to himself. He jumped, but the enticing piñata swung far out of reach. But all around were people eating, dropping snacks for mouse-sized meals, yummy foods he'd never tasted before, tacos, tamales, chorizos, and flan. When Mouse was full, he dozed under the shade of a canopy. Cat crouched in the flower bed, tail up and head down, waiting for his chance. But all around came dancers stamping, heels stomping, toes tapping. Mouse woke up and dashed away from Cat, ducking between dancers' pounding feet, zig, zigging and zagging, jigging and jagging. Cat pounced. Here he comes, coming after him. But missed his prey as Mouse darted beneath the stage. Mouse heard the Maraki, Marachis play, heard the... Gertaron, the trumpets, the sweet-voiced violins. He heard the boom of fireworks and people shouting, Viva Mexico! That means live Mexico! When at last Mouse's heartbeat steadied, his whiskers quivered. Once again he smelled the candy hidden deep in the piñata, but how to reach the sweets? Burrowed in the burrow, swaying high above the plaza. Lickety split, Mouse scrambled up the tree. He inched across the rope like a tight rope walker, one paw in front of one paw behind. He didn't see Cat hiding in the daffodils, his stripy tail switching, his green eyes narrowed. He was waiting for him to fall. The piñata swayed as Mouse climbed up. He smelled the treats, fruity, sugary, and honey sweet. He nibbled, he gnawed, but he could not reach the treasure inside. Just then came the swish of the stick and a, as a child swung and someone jerked the piñata aloft. Poor Mouse. Mouse held on tight as the piñata swayed and sailed, dipped and spun, a carnival ride for Mouse. In the plaza down below, Cat waited for Mouse to fall into his paws like a ripe plum. And then, whap, a mighty blow and the burrow burst. Mouse flew through the air like a skyrocket and landed in the rose bushes, head spinning and tummy churning. Candy spilled across the plaza, showering like hailstones. Children ran to and fro, laughing, yelling, and scooping up handfuls, pocketfuls, bagfuls. Someone stepped on Cat's tail and... Cat yowled and sped home, his tail bruised and sore. When Mouse caught his breath, he sat up. The candy was gone. The people were leaving. The cleaners were sweeping and picking up trash. No dessert for me, Mouse thought, his whiskers drooping. But wait! Hidden in the ivy, Mouse spied one lemon drop, overlooked, forgotten, and wrapped in shiny cellophane, which is that clear paper. He picked it up and ran home to his hidey hole for one last treat. Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mouso. 
Que felicidad. What happiness. All right, how'd you like that one? That was cute, huh? All right, so today after you do your Google Classroom work, if you want to take out your handwriting without tears book, I'm going to show you how to make the lowercase letter I. Now, a lot of you do things on this letter that I'm always correcting, so make sure you do it right. Remember when you make the uppercase letter I, we have the door looking box. There's Hi Smiley up there in the top corner. And the I is a center starter. It starts in the middle, it goes straight down. Then we jump back up and we give it a little hat. And then we go down to the bottom, we give it some shoes. All right, for the lowercase letter I, remember we have the kindergarten box up here, but we use the first grade lines for this job. And usually they dot this one, but for our handwriting without tears, they don't. You're going to make a little tiny straight line down, and in the space up here, you're just going to put a teeny tiny dot. Little line down, teeny tiny dot. Now, what would Mrs. Duncan say if you did this? Little line down, and that. Right? I'd have you fix that. That dot is too big. Little line down, little dot. All right, so work on that today. Tomorrow we have one of the hardest lowercase letters, uh, but I think we'll, we'll be okay. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.